So before moving on to the next topics that I had planned, I wanted to um, briefly talk about um, weight statistics in, in regards to data warehouse type workloads. Um, because data warehouse workloads are, are, are very easily um, accounted for and engineered around in terms of their predictability, um, there's very few complex w weight type considerations that need to be uh, taken into account when looking at weights for a, a data warehouse server. The primary one to look at is the page I.O. Uh, latches um, and I can simulate that right now by just running this. This is the query from my previous video um, which queries a 100 million row fact table and it does so without using the column store index simply because I want to really max out the throughput um, uh, for a few seconds. And so if I execute that and then execute this real fast, I should be able to get something. So, and I do. Um, so, so what page IO latch is? So page IO latch is when you have a query uh, come into the query engine. Now the query engine can try to satisfy that query uh, using data available in memory and if it doesn't have all the data required to satisfy the query in memory then it then it has to go and, and get that memory from from your disk subsystem from your storage system so uh, and because this query of course drops my buffers it has to get all the data from disk and for data warehouse as I explained in previous videos for data warehouse type workloads, this is the most typical scenario um, because data warehouse queries have a large amount of historical transactions and data involved with them. They will not fit into any any cache, any, whether that be the SQL Server cache or even SAN cache. And so th the data has to be retrieved directly from disk where it resides. Um, and while that's happening, while SQL Server is waiting for that data to come back, it, it goes ahead and reserves a place in memory, kind of a landing place for this data. Once it comes back from disk, it then goes into memory and then gets processed on the CPU according to the instructions um, built into the database engine. So um, then what becomes the vital statistic to monitor in your uh, in your data warehouse are these latches, page I.O. latch. So that's, that latch is that reservation in, um, in memory waiting for that data to come back from your disk. Um, so, and and th that is what's going on, that's what's represented here. I have a, typically in most data warehouses you're going to have a shared weight. Um, you might have an exclusive weight if you happen to be querying your your fact table data um, while it's being loaded or updated or something like that by an ETL process. process you might have a, um, a, a, a an EX on there, but most of the time you're just going to have shared because in a data warehouse workload, uh, data is loaded in there, let's say on a nightly basis, and once it's loaded, all DML operations are performed. It just sits there and is available for querying purposes. And so then all those uh, those page I/O latches should be uh, shared and instead of exclusive, the EX type. So if if you um, if your users are complaining currently that their queries are taking a long time, and you go ahead. Um, and run this query and you get a lot of results back you know it is because um, because your throughput you're constrained on your throughput on your megabytes per second that's a very quick and dirty way way of figuring out what the issue is and and nine times out of ten that is the issue with most data warehouses is they're just not properly architected to get the maximum throughput and so um, as a result the queries are slow for the users um, <clears throat> Another way to look at this as well is through um, through the uh, through the weight stats view as well, where your weight type is like page I/O. So here are your page I/O latches. As you can see, this is this is a very common scenario. Usually, you just have shared um, shared locks on that uh, because the data is no longer being uh, being changed. Um, it's just available for being queried, and, what, and and so those queries just share that data amongst themselves. You you might occasionally have um, an up or uh, or 
or you might have the EX type latch on them as well, but that's not quite as common. The executive, uh, executive, the exclusive lock might occur if, for some reason, you're using um, you're using transaction log shipping, if you're using any kind of replication, and your data warehouse is more in an ODS type format, uh, meaning you're continually getting updates um, again through replication uh, to your data warehouse, and you're having um, Data warehouse queries executed against like a third normal form ODS. Then you then you could possibly have and probably will have um, exclusive locks on that. But if you have a proper ETL system, batch ETL system put in place, most of them should be uh, sh shared locks. So w and also one one small thing to to mention here related to this. So many times and this applies to SAN situations. So if, um, if users are complaining that their queries are running slow, and, and you go ahead and run, and you get a whole bunch of, you know, hundreds of lines of these or, or, or significant waits going on, um, and, and you go tell the the infrastructure people, the people responsible for, let's say, the sand, um, and you tell them, hey, you know, the sand isn't responding well. Um, uh, queries are slow because I'm waiting on on data from the disk, and here here are my page I/O latches. Um, if they then push back and say, wait a second. Uh, yeah, I see your page I/O latches, but our disks are not being used. You know, the SAN's fine. It's actually not going. To, it's not being worked up very much. You know, so it's not. It's not a. Um, it's not a SAN problem. You know, something's wrong with your your queries. Maybe your queries have bad logic. You're doing trigger. You're doing like um, uh, scalar, uh, or or you have like lots of triggers, or you're doing more procedural type logic instead of true relational type logic. Um, if that is the case, then most likely the issue is n not that the disks are being overworked and the SAN people are correct. Most likely the issue is one of those SAN I.O. components is being overwhelmed. It's being maxed out. Um, and, and depending on the SAN technology, they may or may not be reporting that fact to the SAN administrators. Um, so, so they could be correct in that the disks aren't being heavily used, the weights are high, and of course the queries are slow. Uh, and this is because there is a problem with one of the, the SAN I/O components. It has it has been maxed out, and it is the bottleneck. Um, and, and so that means that your your disks are not being used very much on the SAN side. Uh, your weight stats are real high, and queries are real slow. So, and unfortunately, there isn't a good simple fix to that kind of thing that I can apply to for everybody and um, that's a matter of working through working with your SAN administrators and working through the IO components one by one and depending on what tools are available to you to see to see those act the activity of those individual components using those tools to to pinpoint the component that is uh, causing the issue um, so those are kind of the, the more typical scenarios that I've seen. Again, this this should give you a quick, dirty, easy way to um, to isolate problems that are most common in data warehouse type scenarios, m mainly the page I/O latch. Um, so that that's and that's really all there is to the wait stats for the data warehouse type workloads, um, or at least that's that's those are by far the most common scenarios. Um, so that that was a, a quick and easy video. I will continue on with the the additional topics as well in in subsequent videos.